Welcome to Electra Online, and here we're going to talk about how to find the potential outside and inside the cylindrical conductor and on the surface. But remember, in the previous video, we realized that we could not assume that at infinity the potential is equal to zero. So what we're going to do instead here is find the potential difference, which is called delta V, between some fixed point, some reference point, and the point of interest. So all we can do there is simply calculate the potential difference between two points outside the cylindrical conductor. For a cylindrical conductor, we know that the electric field outside a conductor is equal to this. And we then assume that if we have a constant electric field, the relation between E and V is this, which gives us V equals E times D. But since we know that the electric field diminishes as a distance, is therefore not constant, we're going to use this relationship, a differential relationship, between the difference in potential and the electric field. So what we can do then is that the change in potential is going to be the integral of the small changes, all the small dVs, going from the initial point, so we start at A and we move to R. So from the point A to the point R, R then represents any point between A and R. Well, R could actually be farther away than A, doesn't matter. But if we're going to do that, we have to realize that the farther away we go from the conductor, the the, the uh, lower the potential, the closer we get, the higher the potential. So as R increases, V decreases, which means we're going to need a negative integral from A to R of E dr. Oop, where's my negative sign? I mean my equal sign. There we go. That looks a lot better. All right. Now, we're going to plug in what E is equal to. So this is equal to minus the integral from A to R of the electric field, which is the linear charge density. So this represents the linear charge density on the conductor, divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times 1 over R dr. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and integrate that. Remember that everything here before the 1 over R is a constant, so this can be written as minus charge density divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the integral from A to R of 1 over r dr. And of course, the integral of that would be the natural log of r. So we can say that the change in potential going from a to r is equal to minus lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of r. And we're going to evaluate this from a to r. So we plug in the upper, upper limit, and then we plug in the lower limit. So this is equal to minus lambda over 2 pi epsilon sub naught times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get the natural log of R minus the natural log at point A. Then what we should do is get rid of this negative sign by switching these two around. So now we have this is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times uh, the natural log of A minus the natural log of R. And then finally, if you remember your rules of logarithm, we can write this as the delta V, so the change of potential going from A to R is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of A over R. And that's the way we can write it in a succinct form. All right, there we go. That's how we find the potential difference from some reference point to some point either closer or farther away. Now notice, if R is bigger than A, then this is a number that is less than 1, and the natural log of a number less than 1 is negative, so we get, a, we get a drop in the potential. If R is smaller than A, then A divided by R is a number bigger than 1. The natural log of a number bigger than 1 is positive, so we get a positive change in the potential, and that's how that works out just fine. So what would it be on the surface? Now let's say that we want to find the potential right at the surface where R is equal to the radius of the cylinder. Well then all we have to do is replace little r by big R. So we, instead of putting little r there, the variable r, we can simply put the radius of the cylinder. And so it means at the surface, at the surface we can then say that the change in potential, again it has to be in reference to some point, like let's say point A, going from A to R, is equal to linear charge density divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of 
the ratio of the reference point divided by the radius of the cylinder. So it's simply equal to that. And finally, what about inside? Well, notice that inside the cylinder, the electric field is equal to zero. Inside any conductor, where all the charge on the outside means there's no electric field on the inside, which means that the potential doesn't change as you go inside, and so the potential inside must be the same as the potential on the surface. So inside the delta V, reference to A, to some point outside the cylinder. So, and in this case, we're going to go to, from A to some point inside the cylinder where R is less than R than R, so I'll write R is less than the radius of the cylinder that will then be equal to the exact same amount lambda 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of A over the radius of the cylinder just like on the surface makes no difference because the electric field is zero inside the cylindrical conductor and that's how we find the potential outside on the surface and inside the cylindrical conductor. Remember, it's always in reference to some reference point. So whatever the voltage is at A, we can find the difference in voltage at another point outside or inside the cylinder. So whenever it comes to potential, there's always a reference point. Maybe we'll let A equal zero. Maybe we'll let A equal 100 volts. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, we're just looking for the difference in potential, the difference in voltage from the reference to another point near the cylinder.